Hey, welcome back. Now we're gonna talk about visual aids, okay? And if you remember from one of the first presentations that we did, I asked you, how many visuals do you think you should have? Do you remember? Okay, well, the answer is more than two, okay? And just remember, you know, broadly, information on visuals is that people learn in different ways. And you got, whenever you think about your talk, you've got multiple streams of communication going, right? Like there's your voice, there's your nonverbal cues, which we learned about, and there's also whatever visuals you have, okay? And so they're all helping you to convey your point, and so whatever the point is. And so the more of those that you have, you know, to a point, uh, the more apt you are to be able to get your information across. Um, so some tips just generally about visuals um, is that uh, it's good to have different kinds. It's good to put them into the people's hands if possible, um, especially if they can take them home. So handouts are always good. You know, quizzes are okay. Like if you got props that you can show and pass around, like that's always good. Um, people love and appreciate, you know, graphics and pictures because they convey a lot of information quickly. And they also break it up, right? So if you think about, you know, the primary vehicle of communicating for you is, is your voice and words. And it's like an auditory thing. If you can throw in, you know, pictures and graphics uh, for the visual learners, then that sort of balances out your message. So things to think about. Um, when I say select the right visual for the right objective, I just mean um, don't, <laughs> you know, uh, like I can't think of a really poor example because generally people do an okay job of this, but um, you, you just want to make sure that think about whatever it is that you're trying to achieve and then think about like what is the right visual for that, you know. So if, for example, I actually have one now. If you're trying to teach them about, um, you know, some kind of like accounting thing, which is really detailed and, uh, you know, requires you to be able to see it up close. And you think, all right, I'm going to put this on the screen and the screen's really small and the resolution's poor and it's a lot of detail and they can't read it. Um, and they can't study it at their own pace because you have to continue moving on and they can't see it. Um, that's a bad use of like, that, that's picking the wrong visual for achieving that objective. So if you want them to learn about like a balance sheet or something that they can study, like it's probably better to give them that as a handout so that they can see it up close and uh, you know study it at their leisure. So that's what I mean by that. And then whenever we talked about at the beginning of the speech, we talked about like what are some ways to bomb your speech. And the, the one that always comes up the most often is, uh, you know, like my PowerPoint wouldn't work. And because of that, I wasn't able to do the speech because I didn't, you know, know everything off the top of my head. And so our example or our suggestion for that is to always have a backup, okay? And so maybe, you know, a lot of people will have it saved on a Google Drive and they'll access it online. But what if the internet goes down, you know, which is the thing that happens here? You know, so maybe you carry a jump drive. Um, or, you know, as like a, like a really backup, backup plan. Maybe you just like always, you know, print out your PowerPoint so that even if you don't have it, like you can do it and look at the thing. And so that, you know, other people may not be able to see it, but you can still give your speech. Um, so I usually have like a couple, three different ones. It just makes me feel better. I usually save it online so I can access it. If I lose my jump drive, I also get my jump drive. It's on my computer. Sometimes I send it to a friend, I print it, all those things. Okay, so, so what are some types of visuals that you can use or things that we would count, okay? And we talked a little bit about these earlier on, but so there's definitely the projector slash computer, you know, sort of thing. Um, and that's pretty standard, right? Like most people expect like a PowerPoint or some kind of keynote presentation. Um, they just become the thing. Sometimes I think if you can do it without it, great. Um, but just know that in general, it's sort of like the industry standard, I guess. Um, there's also the document camera, which is the thing that sort of took the place of transparencies, right? So you probably don't even remember transparencies, um, but it's just really handy. Sometimes, like, especially if, like, you know, my example of filling out, like, a balance sheet, um, it may be the best way to do it, right? Um, like, you just put it up that you see it, and you can mark stuff in, and people can follow along, right? Flip chart's pretty handy, right? Especially if you want to draw. Same thing with a whiteboard. Like, if you want to convey some information, and it's, like, spontaneous, and you're, like, you know, demonstrate, like, create a, a, a feeling of like, oh, what's he going to write, you know, and then they, they follow along. Um, I've seen uh, sometimes like if people have a PowerPoint, for example, and they need to move on to new parts of the speech, but they need you to be able to, you know, reference some like, you know, steps or or some like 
pertinent statistic or some diagram, then what they'll do is they'll draw it out on the whiteboard or they'll draw it out of the flip chart so that it's always right there and people can reference it. Um, you could also just put it on a handout. Uh, but they do that so that, you know, they can move on with their speech, but it's still, like, accessible to the audience. So that's the thing that people do. Handouts are always good. One of the flip sides to handouts is that you should just, like, from the moment that you pass out your handout, you should just plan for about 30 to 40 seconds of not having their attention because they're like, oh, my God, I got a thing in my hands, and then I got to look at it, right? Props are always good. Like, people love them. I don't even understand why, but they do. And then media is good too, right? So like in the last video, I showed uh, a little video clip, right? And so in your talks, uh, again, just the main thing is just to make sure that it's short, right? Because if you're doing a 12 minute talk and you're like, here's a nine minute video, I'm gonna give you like 30% of the grade. So, um, because again, we're, we're coming here to see you talk, not the video. So make sure that, you know, whatever media you bring in, if it's a video or audio or what have you, that it augments your talk, not replaces your talk, okay? All right, that's it for visuals. Uh, we'll come back to this a little later in the semester, but by and large, uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward. We're actually got an assignment that you're gonna do, I think this week, uh, where it takes you like a very detailed way of setting up a PowerPoint. Uh, and so if you're not a PowerPoint ninja at the moment, uh, you will be by the time you create your thing. And this is the thing that people at the end of the semester are always like, I learned so much about PowerPoint and I feel so much more competent in my ability to do the things. One like <laughs> one aside is that just because you can do the things in PowerPoint doesn't mean that you should, okay? So I think that sometimes animations are cool and then other times they're distracting and so you just need to, you know, decide which is which and not have too many to the point that it detracts from your speech. Okay, all right, great, good job.